Yes, yeah, Shyla. Is that mousetrap? Indeed, that's mousetrap. And oh, I see your little hand up there. That's that's I love that. That is the mousetrap game. Uh, I bought it, and it seems sort of weird to start a chemistry class with mousetrap, but I've I've got an ultimate reason for it. Now, so I'm going to try doing it. So I'm going to crank this to move back this boot, which, oh, it worked. The little ball bearing is going down. Whoops. And it's knocked that in there. And we've caught the mouse. OK, this worked almost. I had to give it a little bit of help. I'm going to set it up again. This is a reaction. And the reaction is I turn a crank and I catch a mouse. But it has a series of steps in it. And that's what a lot of chemical reactions are like. A high potential energy. We've got this ball bearing up here. We've got this ball bearing here. There's energy available that's stored, but it's waiting for something to happen. And this is where I ask the question, what do we call the barrier that prevents these steps from occurring? The energy of activation. Yes, the EA. In fact, that's, you know, if you're going to be writing something on a AP exam and they say, what's the barrier that prevents this bucket from coming over is that it's tipped this way. It's got something that prevents it from happening. And you have to have a molecular collision that can get up and above that barrier. Once that barrier is hit, this reaction can go. I mean, this is an exothermic reaction that's waiting to actually catch the mouse. Now, if we didn't, we, I put something around here, you wouldn't see these steps. And that's what usually happens in a chemical reaction. You see the beginning and you see the end. And these things occur in nanos, actually picoseconds. And I'm gonna do that again, this is a fun game. I toss in a little bit of energy and this is our rate determining stuff because it's the slowest one. Oh, it went, come on. Ah, oh, come on, come on, come on, catch. No, oh. we're stuck here. In fact, this is also, I mean, it's a great analogy because we've got a lot of reactions in our body. In fact, most of our reactions that we have, there are biochem reactions. Let me flip over to me. Most of our biochemical reactions have many steps that we really don't know about or notice. I mean, you eat some yogurt. And it's changed into carbon dioxide and water vapor at the end. And you get the energy. I mean, you've got the yogurt. It's got high potential energy. It's got those carbohydrates and all those other things. And, and you go through a whole series of biochemical reactions. And in the end, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and also you, you, you're alive. You can teach a chemistry class. But if you have a any one of those little steps isn't working, then the reaction will keep on going and stop and build up that way. And, the, and what yeah. part of reaction rates are we going to be talking about? Right now, we're talking about all of it. We're talking about the multi-step mechanism, the activation energies, the slow step. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Okay. And we'll have a few more. I'll have a real chemical reaction in a second. But uh, I brought up yogurt because it's something called PKU. Anybody remember that or have read the labels on some yogurt that has aspartame in it? If you read the label, it says, if you happen to have a, it's you might call it a genetic defect, a genetic arrangement where one of the mechanisms that metabolizes aspartame doesn't complete, and you eat this yogurt, that aspartame will start to be, it'll go through its steps. And instead of making carbon dioxide and water, They've got an intermediate that builds up and they'll poison you. There are a lot of reactions that are in our body that are multi-step, that have activation energies and have a mechanism for them. And if any one of those stops, you're in trouble. And so let's go to a real chemical reaction. 